centuries after the fall of the Second Empire, savage nations and petty tribes competed for dwindling resources across a vast post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yet while some, born around the fall of Bast, sought to join larger factions in the hopes they might offer a measure of security and stability, others formed independent alliances, guilds, cults, and bandit crews, settling their own territories where they struggled to provide food, water, and security, but could live by their own laws and philosophies without the oppressive threat of government soldiers hanging overhead. Possibly founded during the years of the Second Empire, Deadcap was a growing human faction with settlements in the far north of the continent. As even the name of their realm may have been chosen as an insult to Catlon, the tyrannical skeleton robot leader of the Second Empire, Deadcap was considered a home for rebels and the descendants of rebels who wished to be free from the wars and politics of the South. Although they were once a relatively strong nation, able to survive the fall of the Second Empire and wars that followed, they struggled to defend against constant cannibal attacks as the painted tribes expanded to conquer much of the north, eventually capturing the city of Deadcat and turning it into their capital, forcing fleeing survivors east and south to live in small, remote fishing villages where they established whatever defenses they could and gained a wary attitude toward outsiders. A mixed population of humans that included Greenlanders and Scorchlanders, Deadcat formed an alliance with the Flotsam Ninjas of the Hidden Forest, as both were enemies of the cannibals trying to overrun their territories, becoming a decentralized nation of distant fishing villages. By the fall of Bast, the people of Deadcat lived along the shores of the northern coast and Dreg. Not far from the northern remnants of Deadcat was another independent faction that suffered a tragic fate from relentless cannibal attacks. Thought of as the beginnings of a megacity and new empire, the settlement was suddenly and entirely abandoned, leaving only a ghost village in the northern coast on the border with the cannibal plains. Seeking to escape the oppressive governments of the Holy Nation and United Cities Empire, a group of settlers made their way north to found a village in an ideal location, surrounded by hills to block the wind and close to water for fishing. They built walls, buildings, and set up turrets for defense, believing that would be enough to deal with the mindless cannibals roaming nearby, but it was not, and slowly settlers started disappearing, either fleeing from fear or losing their lives to cannibal attacks. At some point, the rest of the population suddenly vanished, perhaps fleeing from an attack or simply abandoning the village. But whatever the case, their departure was so hasty, they did not pack many of their belongings, leaving plenty of supplies out in the open, available for passing adventurers seeking respite from the dangers of these lands. An independent city founded in the dangerous foglands, Mongrel became a safe haven for all those lost within the mists covering the territory, providing a measure of safety and security against the endless hordes of mad Hiver Fogmen that attacked any traveler they encountered. A home to shinobi thieves, mercenaries, adventurers, exiles, and criminals escaping the law, the population of Mongrel was cut off from the rest of the continent, and so had no choice but to establish their own economy, with plenty of workshops, bars, machines, and tools for production. Yet many fear for the future of this settlement, as most of those within could not leave or engage in trade, meaning their food reserves will eventually run out. A guild of ninjas and assassins, the Shinobi Thieves were a faction of criminals able to maintain decent relations with both major and minor powers, operating openly in the bars and towers of many settlements across the continent. To join their ranks, all they required was a one-time payment of 10,000 cats, which in turn granted access to beds, training equipment, plastic surgeons, and fences to buy or sell stolen goods at discounted prices. Once accepted into their ranks, they watched each other's backs, always defending a comrade when in trouble or providing medical care after a fight. Given their wide-reaching influence, the guild was one of the strongest minor factions on the continent, but even so, could not stand up to larger powers like the United Cities or Holy Nation. Yet the thieves were so loyal to each other that should one of their members get into a fight with city guards or soldiers, they will all rush to join in, regardless of the odds or certainty of defeat. A small faction of stealthy warriors dedicated to commerce and profit, the Trade Ninjas operated bars and shops in the independent city of Morn, the ruins of the hub, and further north in the border zone. 
a largely neutral faction, simply running and protecting their businesses. It is rumored that they may have secretly involved themselves in the war between the Holy Nation and Shek for their own benefit. At some point during the height of their war, the Shek came into possession of the hub, but suddenly and hastily abandoned the city, setting fire to the buildings and leaving it a ruin. Unsure why they departed, the Holy Nation sent scouts to see if the hub could be resettled, but many, including several priests, claimed they saw shadowy figures stalking them in the night. When soldiers started disappearing, the scouts were convinced the city was cursed, perhaps by the demon goddess Narco. As reconstruction of the hub would be costly, and an apparent threat haunted these ruins, the scouts retreated from the city and recommended against any further contact. With both the Shek and Holy Nation gone, the trade ninjas moved in to open shops inside and outside the hub. Found in the Shrieking Forest, Purple Sands and Cannibal Plains, the Shrieking Bandits were a faction of malnourished humans who devolved to the point they lost the ability to speak normally, instead emitting seemingly incomprehensible screams and shrieks to communicate. Although they have been known to attack travelers, they maintain decent relations with the nomads, who claim the Shrieking Bandits are not bad people and simply misunderstood, with some rumors stating wanderers could avoid fighting these groups if they simply engage in a dialogue and speak the right words. Eager to take advantage of the ever-present dangers in every corner of the continent, mercenary groups rose to earn coin through combat, working to protect caravans, adventurers, and traders, or else lend their experience to the battlefield, fighting for one of the many major and minor factions of Kenshi during their wars with rival states. Often found in bars or wandering city streets, mercenaries could be hired by anyone for personal or settlement protection, requiring only a one-time payment for a specific period of time during which they provide their own weapons and armor. They also reserve the right to claim loot from defeated enemies. Oppositely to the mercenaries paid to involve themselves in the affairs of others, the nomads of Kenshi remain neutral to all, journeying peacefully across the continent while providing a valuable service to outsiders by herding and selling animals, including goats, bone dogs, pack bulls, and garus. Though most lived in temporary camps that could be moved at a moment's notice, some few nomads settled semi-permanent villages in the territories of Shem and Dreg, opening shops for the sale of animals. Engaging in one of the most profitable businesses on the continent, manhunters, slave hunters, and slave traders all earn their cats from enslaving and selling intelligent living beings. In addition to enjoying lucrative relations with the Holy Nation and other slave trading factions, they maintained an especially strong alliance with the Traders Guild and United Cities, establishing a number of mining camps and settlements within United Cities territories. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Drac the Bronze, Raj the Jar, Your Cheap Date, and Sir Ellen Dill of Numenor. If you wish to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, or watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.